Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Hello everybody and welcome to Massachusetts! No, it's the greatest place on Mass. earth. <laughs> actually, welcome to... The Take Incoherent two. Rumblings, episode 36 or 37. 37. Mm-hmm. 37. 36. Okay, we're not getting on this again. Last time. 37. 37. 37. Says 36. 37. 37. 37. And, we are, and we are doing. Uh, no, but you see, the podcast yeah, 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 is 237. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, and we are doing the uh, decentralization. Uh, <laughs> never <laughs> happened before. before. <laughs> never happened before. This oh. is a brand new episode. <laughs> And uh, so we'll get to that in a few moments, but first let's start with the pre-ramble! Pre-ramble, 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 Okay, I want to, you know, ask the audience about the pre-ramble. Because, like, I listen to that and I want to leave the show. Well, <laughs> I want to stop. I want to stop listening. Yeah, when I listen li- to there's no, there's you nobody like listening anyway. You're a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> well, just... Can you put an echo on it? I guess. Maybe a little like beat yeah, in the back. Hey, at works. least it's tweet. Uh, it's what's it called? Free not free balling. But <laughs> <laughs> what Tom? Where, Tom Petty? This is like this is like eight mile. We're up on stage free, dropping the mic. Free balling. Free balling. <laughs> Freestyle, anyway. that's what it is. <laughs> freestyle, yes. It's different every week. It is that's freestyle. Right. <laughs> yeah. so okay. It's freestyle. Uh, and there's going to be some more freestyle because we are we are giving yeah. some structure to our pre-ramble. I was just going to say, give us some feedback, you know, good or bad. Okay, yeah, give us feedback. Yeah. Well, yeah, like, right. yeah. nobody's giving us <laughs> any feedback. <laughs> no, we have... We have listeners or yes, subscribers. We do. Yeah. We do. Yeah, well, they just, just don't want to talk here to yet. They don't want to admit it. <laughs> they haven't heard this. Yet. This is like a guilty pleasure. John, what email this us. <laughs> Cam, Cam, I know you're listening. What's Feedback. the opposite of a guilty pleasure? Feedback. Unconstitutional. <laughs> Unconstitutional. All right. So uh, what we're going to do for our pre-ramble from now on is we're not going to time it, and we're going to each have our own well, section. We're try Just a it. big mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, see that, we'll see if this works. So I will. We, I will be doing Joey's bit tit of the week, which is a little uh, story. I it was a tidbit. Tid- no, bit tit. Tit. Bit, oh. bit tit. Bit tit. Bit tit. Tip bit but backwards. Bit tit. Oh, yeah. you didn't say tit, did you? No. Bit tit. Tit. Big backwards. What? And Paul's going to be doing his word of the week, which will be uh, something probably from Urban Dictionary, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, we try to guess what it is, and then he'll tell us the real yeah, definition. Yeah, I really want to educate the world on um, urbanness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a hard man from the hood. <laughs> with your free yeah. balling. Yeah, right. Um, and Kale will be doing TikTok. With Moesha. Keisha. 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 And dollar sign Rihanna. 7S. And Daryl, and we'll have also have at the very end, we'll have Daryl's ask. Well, he is going to ask us a question. Yeah, feel that we need to respond. We need to respond to. So Are you feeling it? To separate them out, there'll be a, a transitional asked. transitional sound that we'll let you know. So we're going to start off with. Please. <laughs> This is like those old school like <laughs> records yeah. where they, like, when you hear <laughs> turn the page. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> so mine oh for my, my little story for today is you might have heard this on the internet, but I just found it today. So if you've heard it, too bad. Uh, there's apparently these gummy bears that you can get on Amazon, which are sugar free. But what's hilarious is they have a little warning that says they could cause some gastro side effects. <laughs> yes. So here are some of the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> okay. From from them, it says this is the this is and there's a lot of these. There's not just a couple people. Okay, but this one says just don't unless it's a gift for someone you hate. <laughs> oh man, wow. words cannot express what happened to me after eating these. The oh, gummy bear was expression, all right. Yeah, the gummy bear cleanse. <laughs> if you are someone who can tolerate the sugar substitute, enjoy. Oh if you are God. like the dozens of people that tried my order, run. <laughs> Did they for, order, eat the whole bag? First, oh, of, is that your secret? First of all, do you eat those before you? First of all, for taste, I would rate it five. So good, soft, true to taste, <laughs> fruit flavors, and sugar variety. They're like I was a happy camper. Bit tids. But, or should I say, but? 
two teas. Not long after eating these tw 20 of these, hell, hell broke loose. I had gastrointestinal experience like nothing I ever imagined. Cramps, sweating, bloating beyond my worst nightmare. I've had food poisoning for bad shellfish, and, and that was almost like a skip in the park compared to what was going on inside of me. Holy crap. Then wow. came the uh, flatulence. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Oh the sounds like trumpets calling the demons back to hell. The stench like 1,000 rotten corpse vomiting. vomiting. I couldn't... Oh God. I love Rob Zombie. Okay. I couldn't stand to stay in one room for fear of succumbing to my own odor, odors. Odor. <laughs> or, yeah, or, odors. But wait, there's more. What came out of me felt like someone trying to funnel Niagara Falls through a coffee straw. I swear my sphincter were screaming. Oh it felt God. like my delicate starfish was gaping a maw projectile vomiting a torrential <laughs> flood of toxic crap. waste. 100% liquid, flammable liquid, napalm! <laughs> It was actually a bit humorous for a nanosecond. It was just beyond anything I could imagine possible, and it went on for hours. When I, I felt violated when it was over. Which I, I feel think, violated now. Which I think must have been sometime in the early morning the next day. Uh. So it goes on to talk about the delicious tasting hell bears, uh, how he told his friend and her, his friend and she didn't believe him and she called him crying from the toilet <laughs> and then she told her sister who also didn't believe it and did the same thing and there are like tens of these on the website so worth looking up uh, Amazon which, reviews so is there the Haribo which ones are they Haribo's the Haribo? Haribo's Haribo. sugarless gummy bear yeah. reviews what we'll have what to do is we'll have to eat some at the beginning of the oh, podcast dude. Oh, dude. and I, then see how it deteriorates. Uh, 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 bear episode. I, like, no, it, some, you don't want it. Like, if you have this intolerance, it is bad. It is like... And that's did, he people, eat, did he eat the five-pound bag? No, he didn't eat it all. He yeah. hardly, that was the thing. He ate like 1% of the bag and he had this whole bag left. So he, he, he actually gave it to his friend who oh. ate it. And then she gave it to his sister who took it to work oh my. and gave it to people. Wow. So the thing, wow. that's the thing is... I think we've eaten these before. People are, people, this is a challenge now. People go, that's not going to happen. They try it oh, and they get wow. so, so, that's why it's gotten so popular. These so. sugar-free classic gummy bears? Mm. Uh, yeah, I think that's I it. I like when you were... That's Harboro, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you kind of mispronounced it at first. You were like, it's horrible. Oh, it's a horrible. Horrible. Okay, Paul, do your transition sound when you're ready up to you. Uh... <laughs> But you I gotta know say that Donkey Kong looking. had a few of the gummy bears. Word of the week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Paul, what is our word of All the week? All right, so this word of the week, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a word or a phrase. And uh, to teach you some, um, some new urban stuff. Dick. Urban stuff. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. And I'm going to let you guys try to guess it first, and then I'll give you the definition. All right. What All right. Like. Sounds good. Okay, so we this week's word of the week is Brazilian bull ride. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to say it is. Uh, okay, look uh, it is when a woman with a shaved <laughs> pussy uh, <laughs> rides. Did that? Rides. Why is that sad? A guy with a shaved penis. Okay. Ball sack. There's no, I think it's actually What is wrong with you? How is there hair on the penis? Have you got a problem? Doesn't everybody have hair on their penis? Dude. No. Sticking out the top. Uh, <laughs> that's what he masturbates. Oh my god. That's when you masturbate with Rogan. He learned way too much about Joey. Wait, wait, what was that, Paul? That's when you masturbate with Rogan. No. Wow. Okay, so that's my guess. Am I right? You guys want to chime in? I or you want to actually hear? that's Kind of what I was going to say, I'm, I'm except that uh, <laughs> I was going to say a Brazilian wax for the woman, and she's obviously riding bareback. <laughs> it's probably, you know, Paul set us up, because it's yeah, you know, right. obviously going to be non-sexual. All right, Daryl, yeah, what Paul, you want? Uh, But I'm going to keep the theme, but I'm going to say that it's trying to be an ironic phrase, because it has nothing to do with waxing. Or Brazilian waxing, okay. but what it is is when you know, like, she's riding him, <laughs> and the hair works like Velcro, <laughs> all stuck together. All and right. then you're trying to buck her off, and <laughs> all right, <laughs> and with all I the think, fluid, it just. And yes, I was uh, embarrassed before. Okay, okay. Really embarrassed. all right, all right. This is according to the community. Daryl was pretty close. Oh. Really? It's when a man inserts his penis into another man's butt oh. while the other man is passed out. Oh. 
Why would Daryl kill And then alien? goes on to duct tape himself to the passed out man. The goal is to stay on for at least eight seconds when the guy wakes up. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Whoa! Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I am that, so not passing out at a party like, around you guys so, ever again. A Brazilian right. boy. I don't know why it's called Brazilian. Now that, now that that's but out there in the public. It. Dude, that was just wrong. I am, Paul, not, that, I am not going Paul, to pass wow. that out was any wrong. party. That was not cool, wow. man. That brings back so many bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nicely geez. done. Thank you. I wow. like the guy for duct tape little insert there. And I like the insert. Okay, Kale, make some sounds and do your. There you go. You got and it's the Kale's tech talk. That should be your transition. Okay, what's our what's our tech talk this week? We have two things, and the first one is really significant. And that is, they have is finally created, and here it is, I read oxygen is, yeah. respirator. Now you can actually put that in your mouth and go scuba diving, and there, there is no tank. You have no tank. It is actually an artificial gill. Wow. And it's taking the That's water cool. right and actually... Yeah, what it is... It and it's oh, like on episode one when they went through Jar Jar's area. And they there you there. go. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Well, see, the significance of this is that the reason they can do this now is because they have made a membrane that it that has holes so small that water <laughs> molecules... Like you can't spin. Brazilian bull right now. <laughs> 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 Whew. Yeah, but no, and that. we had to go back. That's yeah. very cool. Where <laughs> the water cool. can't get through, but the oxygen molecules are small enough, oh, they nice. go through the membrane, and so the battery is pumping this through. So as long as your battery lasts, you can scuba dive. And wow. it's it's not as small as the one on Fat Menace, but it's that. No, this is it, right yeah, here. That's the it. shape, and it, wow, it's, it's, really it's got like these it long gills on oh, it. Cool. So okay. it looks like a rebreather. Oh, that was a guy's arm, like the power force. We'll, we'll put a picture on the show notes. <laughs> yeah, it'll be in the show notes. We'll put in the show notes. And you had a second one. So if you're a professional yeah, that's diver, that's very cool though. If you're a professional diver, it's a tankless job. But so oh, 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 there's a joke of the week. All right, the next one is is that. They have the world's first light producing plant. They uh, took cool. DNA from a firefly cool. and inserted it into a plant. And the plant Did is it come called. Alive? Wow, that was. Um, <laughs> that's ironic. Dun 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 dun, dun dun dun. All right. Well, the thing is, is because it's. They named it the Starlight Avatar, is the name of the plant. And it actually glows like okay. green Sorry. in the dark. You know, and it's uh, hmm. kind of music-y. so really cool. That is actually really cool. And so, was that a Kickstarter project? It is. Yeah, I would love it to is. have one of those. Are you sure with, they didn't just with this. open up a glue stick little... and throw it on it? <laughs> <laughs> probably give us they, thousands of dollars. They probably watered it with yeah, a glue well, stick. Did they, did they reach their stretch goal because they were they had a stretch goal that they were going to make a glowing rose if they got enough. Money. Yeah, wow. yeah, I saw that, and okay. I think they have reached it. Good. That's, That's cool. I would love to have that as a as like a nightlight. The, the be only so problem awesome. is right now this plant only lives for three months, and it's really expensive. Expensive, yeah. so but that's that's cool. That's showing a lot of stuff for the future. I can see that as yeah. a oh, that that's awesome. cool. All right, cool. Yeah. And now let's go to oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's howdy, folks. Daryl's <laughs> <Yeah, it's laughs> ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, you gonna get your Daryl's ass here. <laughs> 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 Another prospector. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> This will probably make a good rub down, by the way. Maybe. Oh, 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 oh. oh a Brazilian. Yeah. Oh, right. It'll be a Brazilian rub down. Nice. Okay. Well, okay. What? Well, so, Daryl. Well, I know why it's called Brazilian because when you rip the duct tape off, the oh, hair comes out with it. Kale, oh, oh, you are. You are. Oh, that's it. Oh, you TMI. are so smart. Oh, man. Sorry, Daryl. Go ahead. Okay. That was HTML. Okay. Hell, okay. okay. oh, too much information. Yeah. Uh, so, um, it was funny that you mentioned a firefly earlier because I was going to ask each of you who's your favorite Firefly character and nice. why. Mine's from Cobra on G.I. Joe. <laughs> Firefly <laughs> my favorite. He's old school, man. Yeah. He was from released Serenity. alongside, what was the oh other guy? Um, there was Firefly and like this other dude that were kind of Storm unique. No, not Storm like Was it a Cobra guy? Yeah, it was a Cobra guy. Hmm. Ah, we'll get back to him. That's yeah. Just show us. Okay. okay. Um, um, favorite Firefly, I have to go uh, with Wash. Yeah, hilarious, I funny. It. I relate to him. 
just yeah. just was fantastic. But you, Matt was be playing with dinosaurs during the yeah. podcast. Going, yeah. <laughs> however, however, he, look at this vast and wonderful land before, us. <laughs> and we will call it our land <laughs> <laughs> or this land, this land. <laughs> yeah, and we'll call it your grave. Ah, curse your inevitable but up. Uh, well, Wait, curse your your sudden but, but inevitable, inevitable betrayal. betrayal. Arr. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I, but I, close second. I, I relate to, to to Wash. However, Mao's character is incredible. I think his mm-hmm. character arc is fantastic, and I, I and not like very game. credible. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Kale, I I well, you take I'm Paul blanking on her. Yes. I'm blanking oh, on her okay. character's name. So I'm trying Inara? to think of it. The hooker? No, no, no. Uh, Summer Blau. <laughs> Oh, uh, oh River. 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 River is my favorite character. Okay. And why would that cool. be? Because she freaking kicks ass. Yeah, I just does. love that. When it clicks. And yeah. she's psycho. Yeah. yeah. And that helps too. Yeah. Right. Paul, did you I have relate to a, that? Actually, um, I like Jane. <laughs> yeah. Jane. Jane's what? funny as hell. I like his hat. <laughs> <laughs> Jane would be my second one. Yeah, Jane would be my second one. And I, I love cool. when, what is it, Janestown or something? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was a good episode. Yeah, really yeah that was yeah. a good Anyone want to ask me a question? What would be your favorite Firefly dude? Oh, gosh. Not Firefly uh, dude. You don't have to make it <laughs> a no, guy. Who's your, who's your favorite? You uh, always ask the last, I think. Kaylee. Nice. Yeah, just because she's like... She Carol's seems like she would be again. super sweet. You know, mm-hmm. just a nice woman to know. I think she's a hot. Yeah, I think she'd, that too. <laughs> I think she'd do a Brazilian bull I, I, for you. There's also I, I'd be okay with that. And I'd do her before. I like. I think she's far hotter than an artist. You'd do her something. before Mal? Yes, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'd have to do each other first. <laughs> However, he is also hot. Yeah, but if he had the Brazilian bull rights, <laughs> definitely be Mal. God, no, I'm never going to get that out of my head. <laughs> oh, never again. from Barney Miller. The only no, thing that's going to be right there next to the bull bat. Bull a, a girl. <laughs> Is that your next yeah, question? Staying, staying on for eight seconds would be pretty damn easy, I would think. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's but, why but the real are, challenge is a big guy. But remember, it's 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 through the butt, so they have to agree to that. <laughs> no, they don't. No, no, no. <laughs> but she would be. I mean, I guess. Yes, whatever. If okay. they're passed well, out, all... how can they agree? No, I thought that you were supposed to be on top for that because you're trying to stay yeah. on for eight seconds. Yeah. Okay. But so if you... you're trying to stay on a girl. No, it's a guy. No, it's a, yeah, guy. it's a guy. I know. But if you do it to a girl, you still saying, stick your d- in her butt. She's gonna freak out. But then she's the one <laughs> trying to get off of you. Okay, we're putting way. Well, you're trying to get off All right, no conversation. <laughs> that is the end of the pre rebel. Daryl, let me show you. Pre rebel, pre rebel. End of the pre rebel. Daryl gets. All right, timer starts. Bam. All right, so introduce. I'm gonna uh, let Daryl introduce today's topic because uh, uh, he's changed it a bit from the one that never happened. So <laughs> <laughs> I didn't change it that much. Well, go ahead, Daryl. Tell us what's going on for today. Okay, so we're going to talk about decentralization, and uh, for starters, we want to just get uh, in touch with what centralization means and how it starts and what it does for everybody. Uh, am I kind of on the right track here? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. What decentralization and centralization mean to each of us? So um, I'll start by saying that uh, to me, I think centralization is something that happens naturally because uh, people like a hierarchy that works top down, and that gives a center of power to things. Um, it also gives authority, which can help lead to standardization <laughs> and things like that. It's not always efficient. Yeah, and uh, it's not always egalitarian. It's, it's sometimes corrupt. However, it um, kind of keeps all the troops in line. I think it naturally arises as people uh, pull their uh, pool, their resources. I, I, I think it has to because until the technology is available to make something else happen, uh, you can only have anarchy. Yeah. Beca- and anarchy doesn't work for yeah. the most part. If you're just going to do whatever you want, you don't want. make much progress. It's not anarchy. a society, yeah. and that's just right. that's just the way it is. So centralization is important as a startup. I guess. Well, people say. need order. Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah. The order is established by that. And then I think what we're looking at now is how uh, rising technologies are leading to where you can still have uh, the standards and the organization, but you take the people out of the power structure. Uh, and that's a very interesting way. I'm glad you brought it up that way because uh, in some other universe where we tried this before and it may right. not have worked, uh, it was confusing. But this actually is very clear to me. That, and that yep. I like how it, you're saying we started up, mm-hmm. we needed it. There was order, there was centralization, right. but it really comes down to order without people. 
Right, oh, right, right. Oh, something that like All right, then. That was not very loud, was it? I heard it. That's loud enough. Just a, yeah, we're gonna, just <laughs> just a little. Okay. okay, so we're going to move on now to uh, how technology is rooting, tooting, decentralizing force, which is kind of what we're getting into. Uh, mm-hmm. And networks have given power to people. So it, it really mm-hmm. is. If you look at, like, like I was saying, you, you, can't, uh, you can't have decentralization like without technology because... Uh, how are you going to organize? You need to have a power to organize, an intelligent power, and that intelligent power is individuals. But as we get into technology, I'm thinking, well, now we have the intelligence coming from a different direction, which is artificial intelligence. Well, well also, yeah. I mean, the, the the network that gives power to the people, I mean, look what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. I mean, before, you you the only way to get your voice across to the people is with radio. And with that, you need to go through the FCC, and it costs money, and this and that. And um, you have to have a big company backing us to do this. Right. Exactly. And right now, we're, we record this. It's produced. People are listening. And well, we're getting kinda, in <laughs> sort of... Oh, sort of <laughs> in theory. Uh, but, not after this episode. But more information is able to get out to people. More There's more collaboration and more discussion going on because of, the t- of technology. You started to go, my brothers and my, my sisters. My brothers and my sisters. <laughs> I heard it in your voice. So, uh, I think that, yeah, like the first <laughs> yeah. the first ones are like uh, peer-to-peer networks mm-hmm. are what really started a big move to decentralization, yeah. which, uh, of course, destroyed the music industry as we used to know it. Right. Yeah. It didn't even, destroy them, though. Well, no. even not uh, just peer-to-peer them. stuff, just the, the whole idea of the internet has uh, taken centers of power and distributed them a lot. It's kind of like the democratizing force in doing things like we're doing. Like, this is essentially radio, but we didn't have to grab um, some rare airspace <clears throat> to do this because now there's the internet where there's a pretty much infinite bandwidth for everyone to suck up. Right. So it doesn't. We don't have to take space away from all the other people vying for it. You know, there there can be hundreds of thousands of podcasts, and guess what? There are. Yeah. Right. And uh, two big words that I think are key to this is that um, before the internet started making things more distributed and giving power to the people on a network, uh, you had to vie for legitimacy and permission to do things. So uh, when there were only so many television channels, if you wanted to, you know, be seen in movie theaters or on video or something, you had to have deep pockets and pay for the privilege of having this rare space that only a few people had access to. And now, now it's really uh, whatever's good is going to come to the top if it gets hopefully pushed in the right direction. So well, it might be why like, we're not there. But yeah, and then, another yeah. just trying to fly <laughs> for listeners. Yeah, another example of the networks is like starting next month. In February, uh, the WWE is going to have their own their own off. network, what and what they're <laughs> doing is yes. it's not going to be on Directv. It's not on cable. It's going to be like connecting to the internet to their server. Yeah, like the, a lot, that's happening Apple with TV. a lot. Of- and one thing that they're doing that bucking against the networks is that it's ten dollars a month. You get all their content, all the old stuff. Plus, with that ten dollars a month, you get every single pay per view that's available. So instead of paying sixty dollars to Directv for WrestleMania, right. your nine ninety nine a month, nine ninety a month subscription gets that as part of it. So they're taking the money away from Directv, where Directv is gouging people for these yeah. one one shot pay per views, and they're just giving. That's another thing too. The competition is there, so a lot of these dinosaurs are dying off. Exactly, and. Um, you know, the dinosaurs were screaming bloody murder when Napster came out about like, oh, everyone's a thief, everyone wants to steal content. But now we're seeing it proved that once content's available at an affordable price, people will pay. Yeah. Like, I gladly pay for Netflix so I don't have to go find every movie I want to watch. You know, cause, you know, I just admitted piracy there, but what yeah. the hell? Well, no, but real quick, how come it? all the rappers that um, rapped about stealing stuff were mad that people were stealing their songs? It's true. Yeah, that it is kind of because they wanted money. Was, well, who was that group that that did a concert for all the people that illegally downloaded their music? Are we? Uh, are oh, we, uh, continuing or something? Are, are, would you guys like <laughs> to extend? I, I don't anyone? know. Let's extend. Okay, yes. we're extending. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, it wasn't Metallica because they were no, they were pissed. No, no, they were douches. Who they was were, it? They were pissed. Uh, I don't know who it was, but there's always Weird Al. Don't yeah. download <laughs> this song. Yeah. One of I his best. That. Totally. Uh, yeah, but no, and that's the whole thing is that 
people now have more power individually. It's a two minute extend, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. They, we have more power. Two inch. Yeah. <laughs> we have more power. We have more power individually now. And even when you say individually, it also means in smaller groups to be able to do what was not able to be done before. And you don't need the big central power to distribute you. You can distribute yourself through the network. Right. And there's self-publishing in terms of books. And um, when and when I first heard about that, I thought it wasn't going to work. And Kale kept telling me, no, this is the future. And he's right. That's where book publishing is mm-hmm. going to go. Yeah. Completely. Well, wasn't, wasn't it, it became easy for the masses to I'm get, to as get as this hear me. <laughs> information? <laughs> That's where it becomes successful. It's like there was always like a videos online to stream and, and this and that. You know, we could download them and do whatever. But once like something organized like Netflix came out where... It's easy for like moms and dads and whoever just plug a box in and get it, you know. Right. Or publishing Amazon becomes so, so simple to get it off the web. So once that became popular, then then the masses break, caught on. That's and, a really good point. Good. Is that the technologies that start out as being kind of the purview of the geeks eventually becomes easier to use through mm-hmm. innovation and and um, people building the technology up, which will come into play when we talk about things like uh, Bitcoin later on. Because right now I think it's a little bit in that nerd space, but there's some work to be done, and it'll eventually become this thing that everyone can use. So. Yeah. It- I remember when I was first putting music onto MP, you know, MP3 files, going, "Oh my God, I can listen to this through my computer." Pudding. Yeah. Pudding. Can't have a pudding if you don't eat your meat. <laughs> <laughs> but no, honestly, I, I, I thought it was the coolest thing. Now it's uh, moving on to the next one. So education, <laughs> entertainment, <laughs> publishing. Oh, we already we were kind of talking about that. We were publishing, kind of talking about communications, that. entertainment. We need to extend that. Yeah, well, we did though. Oh. Uh, so and entertainment and. But we could talk about more things like we kind of hit entertainment and publishing. But yeah. what about higher education? Think uh, about yeah. things like Khan Academy. Yeah. Um, all this stuff where it's like higher education is moving online. Um, colleges are putting up professors that are world famous their their lectures and everything mm-hmm. online you can access the books through e-publications it's just like now you can educate yourself uh, oh yeah pr- pretty much for free. knowledge is becoming yeah. free which yeah. it, it was i mean you look back in the scale of time knowledge was always for the aristocrat mm-hmm. yeah. the, uh, privileged. The, the, the privileged right and as and more and more it became free and now there's free public education a good education still costs money today but it's starting to that point where it's going to be available for anybody who wants to take the time to, to get it, and it will be effective. It won't be like, uh, you know, what's some one of those crappy schools? Of, I, I, Phoenix comes Phoenix. to mind, but they're actually okay, I guess. Right, right, right. You know, but there's some out there that have been that have tried to be just Abraham Lincoln getting Law money. School. Yeah, yeah, yeah stuff like that. <laughs> but no, it's good. education, and think about it in the Dubai. term of elementary schools and even just in middle school and high the school. University of Dub- Dubai. The, Dubai. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm, yes. Uh, Actually, this probably is the University of Dubai, and I just yeah. like dissed them. Yeah. Yeah. There, yeah. there goes our audience awesome. in Dubai. Oh, good job, Daryl. We'll be invited to the ski slopes in the middle. Well, we but there's, uh, lost I think I've mentioned this before. Anyway, so. I think I mentioned this before, or we talked about it, the idea of reverse education mm-hmm. or a reverse homework. I forget what it was it called exactly. Flipping your class. Yeah, where you flip your class, where you do the lecture and record it, and then you give it to the kids to watch for homework. So they learn it yeah, at home, right. and then they come in and do the hands-on do the work hands-on with you work. where yeah. you are guiding them, not sitting there that teaching. That sounds much more efficient. Mm-hmm. And that I think that's cool. going to be what the future of teaching is. I mean, I think we'll be able to do more from home as kids and kids growing up, but I think there will always be that uh, time when you want to get together for social reasons and for learning reasons. You have to be physically involved to do it. Yeah. The, the, hard, the hard part with the, the flipping the classes is, is, one, getting faculty that are – to buy in on it and also the kids to actually watch their it's like they need to do their homework when they go home but it's, well, it's, it's watching the lecture it, yeah, you know? what, it, what it goes back to once again is you'd be putting the responsibility back where it belongs yeah. which is on the parents instead yeah, yeah, of expecting yeah. the teachers so it's not centralized in the class yeah yeah, yeah. And then, and, uh, go on. No, <laughs> right. I was going to say there's a matter of efficiency too because there are only so many really excellent lecturers out there. And um, you think about how many teachers you need per student, uh, you know, the numbers are fairly high, so you need to have a pretty big workforce for education. Yeah. When um, you can argue that maybe, you know, hands on education is more effective and actually being there for a lecture is more effective. I, I can grant those things. However, it is more efficient to have these um, distance learning 
uh, things in place where you know people can watch a lecture online. Mm. They can work with their own local teacher about certain things. But if you get a higher quality instruction that way, um, <laughs> and you don't need to have you know awesome lecturers at every single campus, you can have them all uh, distributing their... And it will be kind product. of like the entertainment, where the best things will come to the top. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's like those lectures, you can, the MIT lectures on YouTube, you can see which ones are the good ones, because those have millions of hits. And that's yeah. another thing, the rating thing, which happened on Demon, you know, and, uh, right. and Freedom, is the idea and that... Amazon. And that's where it's going, <laughs> is that you know the truth about something, because in large numbers, it cannot... You can't, right. you know, manipulate that. Ow. Right. Darn. Anybody want to stand? Uh, let's go on. Okay, mine. moving on to, but well, what about the network effect? I want to go to Tashi Station to pick up some power converters. <laughs> it, says go, it says whiny on here. Friends, when <laughs> your chores are done. Um, yeah, so what about the network effect? Uh, what, what, what is that? Why, well, am I, why, why am I whining about like, it? Uh, why Facebook is so popular because you know half the people who are there are there because everyone else is there. Right, oh, yeah. right. not because it's social. good. We're still right. social right. animals. But that's just it, not because it's necessarily good, but because it's popular. So the thing is that despite decentralization, there is a certain amount of centralization going on currently because people want to go where they have access to everyone else. Yeah. So networks like Facebook, they've become a very powerful big corporation that wields a lot of influence. Well, it goes back to what Joey and I uh, read in this book called Linked, which is hubs on the internet become so important. And that's what Facebook is. It's a huge hub. Yeah, and a walled garden because they try to be like the internet inside the internet. Mm -hmm. so they try. They, they you know, Because they AOL. made their own version of email and stuff like that. They kind of yeah. want you to live on Facebook and some people do because yeah, yeah. that's where all their friends you see are. other ads. Fools. Yeah. <laughs> but it makes sense being on that you, you know, because it's for the masses. The masses are on there. Right. You want to connect to your grandma. You want to connect to your well, aunt, your your cousin. That's what everyone's on. Where you get kind of like the smaller ones like, like Google+. Plus. It's the people that I connect with Google Plus is like us. Yeah. But and like a handful of other people. Correct me if I'm wrong on this, or not wrong, but if we're going to talk about this later. But I think this is solved by better technology. Because the reason right. that people are going onto Facebook is because everything they need is there. They don't have they don't want to have to go to Google, to their email, to this, to that. And there's the technology isn't good enough to combine it all where you can just say, Hey computer, tell me what's going on here or whatever. They're trying to use the artificial yeah. intelligence, I say with air quotes, of Facebook to direct them, but it's it's more of an illusion, I think. Yeah. Well, when this, they get uh, when software agents become really intelligent, then they can function uh, that way. They can go on. You can say, "I want to send yeah. out this picture." It'll put up to all your networks, and you'll have, or right. which ones you want it yeah. to, and it will know what uh, what should be private. To this person and and public to everybody else. And you'll open up your computer and it will just it won't be a company. It'll just be your open your browser. It'll be your streaming time line or whatever. Well, a couple of things I want to point out about how um, there is some centralization going on there is that you know a lot of people use Google for services and a lot of people use Facebook for networking socially. We um, there are targets for um, groups like the NSA to spy upon. It's like when you want to get the pulse of the nation, you just have to like basically insert yourself between uh, the internet and mass and Google and siphon off all that information, which is exactly how the NSA approached it. Google wasn't even complicit in it. They, you know, they, it was like an in-between job. So because there's this central authority in Google, there's a place that can be tapped for everyone's privacy to be intruded upon. So um, I think it's important to point out that these things wind up um, being targets because they're centralized. Also, they have the authority to dictate rules to us. Now, if we don't like them, sometimes people complain and they get changed. But Facebook, in particular, is notorious for you know changing up the privacy rules and just trying things out. It's like they, it seems like sometimes they think something might be controversial, and instead of asking beforehand, they just basically make a change. And they ask for forgiveness afterwards. Yeah. If right. they, sometimes they have to change it back. Um, but the thing is, when there's someone in control like that, then there's someone who can corrupt the system. Yeah. Or control the system. <laughs> right. Okay. Nice. Hey, nice. Good timing. Yeah, nice. Nice. Good. 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 All right, good. so let's move on now to uh, making the network effect the people's bitch. <laughs> bitch. 
Is that the rock or something? <laughs> the new, people's bitch. New technology. <laughs> <laughs> new technology. Finally, like, the rock has returned. Like Bitcoins and DAC offer alternative power. So I think we need to do a basics. I think we're probably going to have to extend this too on the idea of what a Bitcoin and DAC is. So Bitcoin is... Right. Is uh, go ahead, Darrell. All right, Bitcoin is decentralized currency in a nutshell, and yeah. it's um, oh, nutshell, it's software yeah. that's being run by independents, <laughs> and it's uh, it has a ledger that's transparent. Anyone can check on it to find out that a transaction happened. It generates consensus, which is very important for this kind of decentralized network. And it runs on a set of rules that nobody has the power to change. It, no one person can say a Bitcoin is suddenly... Well, Bitcoins are mined. So when a block is mined, so many Bitcoins are generated. No one can change the number of coins generated without getting consensus from at least 50% of the people running the network. It, so right. It works on its own, basically. Yeah. It, there, there's mm-hmm. nobody behind... There's someone who started it, right. and it went... And it's going to keep going because it's like and you once said. Once it's unleashed it's, on the internet, there's right. no controlling it. Right. And as long as someone's running a node, Bitcoin exists. And it's it's based on a set of rules, so it's just going to follow those rules. It's exactly. a program, so and it's a, so it's, it's safe. Right. And it's safe because it's because of the encryption method. You can't get in. It's too complicated. Right. And I wanted to comment on you know, like earlier, Kale, you said something about artificial intelligence, and I think. That's nice to uh, think about right now, but we're even proving with something like Bitcoin that you don't need to have an intelligence there. It's just right. a rule set. It's just the way it's distributed and can work out consensus and have a transparent ledger that gives it its power. So, uh, and right now it's running as a currency, but it has the potential to be a platform to be so many other things. And that, that's what brings up the DACs, which are the distributed autonomous corporations. The idea is right. that you can run something like a bank using the same technology with just a few extra layers and rules written on top of it. You know, I, I think that one of the interesting things about all of that is that we th- we're thinking this is how Bitcoin and DAX, we're speculating about how they're going to work. But yeah. just like with almost all of technology and the internet, all of this, is that it always ends up going somewhere we didn't expect. Yeah, exactly. And th- I think that's what's going to happen with it. Yeah. Um, we, we're, we're not imagining what can happen with it. It's going to go where no man has gone and before. And when it goes there, like, and, and then there will be duct tape to well, it. Well, I know what one of the, the first thing that's going to happen, <laughs> it's going to be porn. Because it's always porn <laughs> first. Yeah. Automatic yeah. porn? Automatic Aut- porn. Autonomous porn? I wish I could take, I wish I could porn. rewire my brain, the part of my brain that, that motivates me to go to porn. <laughs> To do things that are more important. <laughs> like, I really gotta clean this room. Oh, we gotta clean this room right now. But first, I'm gonna watch The Hills Have Thighs. <laughs> they do. Oh, those hills. I tell you. Okay, the so, valleys. and the whole point the is that it's, we're coming to the idea that decentralization, the technology is available, where we take the human element out of it and put it to a set of rules, and then it just goes. And right. there's that way it's pr- like well, said, it's protected. Things, one of the things is the company that's promoting DAX uh, as their own you know term and everything is Invictus Innovations. Invictus, yeah. And they're um, they're not Nelson Mandela. By the way. <laughs> the, they have. Are they Morgan Freeman? <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> With a stroke. <laughs> the apartheid. <laughs> yes, exactly. Home of the Nelson Mandela. <laughs> okay, so. Um, <laughs> Massachusetts. Oh, guys, it's too early. Okay, uh, extend. I'll use mine. Okay. And if you want, if you want to keep going after that, because this is the, this is a huge part of it. Yeah, it's huge. Totally oh, that's part. big. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I'm, while I'm editing the structure, you go ahead. Oh, so yeah, uh, what uh, what I was saying is just the technology is there Seven. for this to happen now, where it wasn't before. It's the the idea is that organization had to happen before, uh, had to happened because there was some person or individuals that were in a group centralizing it. But now it can be centralized by a set of rules, by technology, mm. and the companies you were saying, the yeah. one that's starting it is Invictus. Is Invictus. Invictus. Are they Invictus. trying to do a bank or are they doing... That's their own? first app for this. And that's the thing, like Bitcoin, a lot of people are looking at that as like finance and using it as a currency is like the first app. And... Um, when you think about it as something that has the potential, like you were saying how you can't foresee what's coming. It'd be like being back in like 1993 or something and saying, oh, there's this new thing called the TCP IP stack and that's going to be the basis of networking computers around the world. 
what's that going to lead to? Well, who had the foresight to see YouTube and and Facebook and all James these other foresight? things we're doing with it? Um, now I think we're in a similar spot where <laughs> these um, platforms can be used to build these things that we just can't even dream of right now. But one of the things that I think is uh, feasible is to do things like uh, finances, banking, um, having exchanges. That things that have a set of rules, right? Because things that's a set of rules that, that can just be and followed. That, and yeah. they can work as an impartial third party, right. which is basically right. what, what government functions as when you exchange money back and forth. But like I make a cash payment. It's an agreement between two people to yeah. uh, give wealth. But the trusted third party is the backer of the of the funds, well, which is we're, the federal We're reserve. hoping and yeah. assuming that it's <laughs> yes. gonna that by doing this we can get rid of corruption. Right. Because you take yeah, people out of it. It's like a corporation with no right. people actually running it. It's a program. Yep. Uh, you want it? you can extend if you want. We okay, can do a double extend. extend. One more extend. Double ext Who, double you, extend. Who's that? extending? That's your extend. Yeah, You've got one extend. more left. Who is it, Paul? Paul's yeah, got Paul. one. Okay, okay, you can take okay. my extends. Well, no, no, that's we're taking his. Okay, whatever. You still got one left. Keep going, Daryl. Yeah. Right. Well, um, you, you were saying who that that uh, no one controls it, but weren't you saying that like if fifty percent or more of the people vote on something, they could change it? Is right. it fifty percent of the users or fifty whoever or fifty percent of like the well the coin, security whoever comes, like fifty percent of coin owners out there or this, okay, of the, the coins without getting into too much technical detail. Which the would be a good security. Idea. Stay away from that is um, done by people who mine whatever coin. Or if it's not a coin, it would be So tokens, if you have more right? coin, if you've mined more coin, do you have more vote? It's how much mining uh, power you're putting into it. So if you if you basically harness more than 50% of the mining power, that means you can take control of the chain and... So people can take control of it. But I think yeah. if they... But once they but together. Bitcoin has become such a big network that now you would need to spend billions of dollars to buy the equipment to take control of it. So a country could do it. A country potentially could, but it would or also be risky. But I think as as we go Apple, along, Apple could just buy it. Well, <laughs> it would probably be more destructive too, because the thing is, like, someone who has that kind of power can make all sorts of money in Bitcoin by mining the coins. And then if you basically decide you want to destroy the network and ruin everyone's faith in it by changing the rules, then you kind of shoot yourself in the foot. So you know, if you're greedy enough, you're not or going banking. to. You're not going to go there. Get right. together. So where is this? Right, so right. where do you think this is going? I mean, it, it, this is you were saying about you know Invictus and what's your final thoughts? Because I know this is going to be. Well, they want to. Um, Mr. Springer. They want to create these <laughs> these new entities on that you know operate autonomously. Uh, they're out there. People who um, participate in the network by mining, they they actually receive dividends as shareholders, as if it's a corporation. But they're like silent bondholders. They don't get a vote. Right? Huh. Interesting. Uh, we're going on to... No, no, no. You checked up too, too quickly. What's the big deal? What? Damn, oh, that that was the, the big other deal. one. Yeah. No. That's what we're doing. Decentralize, decentralizing systems. That's kind of what we're talking about right now. Ideally, champion transparency, <laughs> right. trustworthy... Con yeah, so we're going into the idea that what's the advantages of having a decentralized area. So, yeah, Darryl, right, if you right, want to continue on your... Continuation. Yeah, thought. so the thing is trustworthiness. You don't have to depend on humans who can have their palms greased to, you know... Why does this smell like Play-Doh? Am I the only one smelling the Play-Doh? I think you're What's playing that? with those dolls. I mean, dolls. Dude! Action right, figures! Right, wait, wait, wait. Action figures wait, too yeah. much! I'm certain this will work. What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so, uh, so things won't get ruined like this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and, no, they'll uh, get ruined anyway. So no, but uh, uh, you were saying uh, transparency. No, what did you say? Trustworthiness. Right. That was it. Okay. Well, transparency is one thing. Like, what corporation or government champions transparency? Right. Yeah. They no, all have kind of glass makers. Glass makers. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Is it uh, yeah. uh, lens crafters? Oh. Oh. Uh, but the thing is that that's one of the uh, things about this kind of network that works is that Bitcoin has a ledger that shows every transaction that's ever occurred. And those transactions are somewhat anonymous. They're basically uh, tied to wallet uh, accounts. So when I make a transaction in Bitcoin, it shows my wallet address, which is just kind of a random string of characters. Um, now, that could be tied to me. That's why it's pseudo-anonymous. But... Um, 
the thing is that being transparent, it, it actually allows several powerful things to happen. I mean, first of all, we've never had an economy where you can actually study every microtransaction that occurs. And this can lead to things like big data where you can go through um, the information and actually find out in those records people's spending habits and things like that and a kind of detail that's never been achievable before. And then on top of that, uh, because it's something that's arrived at by consensus and everyone uh, double checks the rules to make sure transactions are legitimate, you basically can't backtrack and say that something didn't happen. Once it's embedded in the blockchain, you basically would have to expend um, Interesting. a very large amount of com computational power to go back and change something because it's encrypted. No That's actually very interesting because I yeah. think one of the biggest problems we have not only in finances and business and politics is lying. Right. And the idea is that people, because they're, so, you know, we're all, there's this whole altruism thing that doesn't exist. We went over that once. <laughs> and the whole the whole idea is people do what they can to get ahead. Voice of a woman, what do you have to say about and that? And individually, <laughs> no, no, we're not starting that. And <laughs> it, listening. Good. Oh. And, <laughs> no, I, we just try That's not to get off. Topic because we're off topic now. Uh, to, to get, damn it! What was I going to say? <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> another extent. What was? What were you talking? What was it? Transparency. Oh. Corruption. Transparency. Uh, politicians. No. Oh, 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 there's no lying. So you can't go back. So it. it, it in the future, we'll be able to take away the the ability to get ahead by making little lies that everybody thinks, oh, it's okay if I just make a little lie and get ahead here, and then it may become big lies in politics and mm -hmm. finances, business, whatever, because it will be there in the rules, in the set of technology, and you can't hide it. Yeah, and because it's based on open source software, everyone can inspect the code and know what the rules are. So you you realize if you want to play in that system, you, you basically know ahead of time whether or not the rules are fair. Yeah, so, that's yeah. true. I, I think that uh, rich people are starting to be a little more scared uh, about these type of situations. See, not just rich people, but power people. In that exactly. Of power. Okay, next up. Power. Yeah. Ain't got no regulation for that. <laughs> Can't regulate it. <laughs> Can't regulate this. Well, that's what we're talking about. Is that, is that of course, all of the cor uh, the people with power are going to want to find a right. way to gain control of this. But as we've seen with the music business and now with, with uh, books, uh, publishers, that even these powerful corporations cannot stop it. I and think, that's, a, that's encouraging. I think if we look at networks as a whole, look at evolution of networks in a biological system. You never have this one part running the whole thing. You can't because mm -hmm. that's going to lead to... You know, if if our whole body was run by one thing, that one thing dies, then we're gone. I mean, sure, we've got the heart and everything, but they're made of many different cells. And it's the idea that I think as we evolve as a society, we're naturally going to decentralize because that needs to happen in order for the society to stay alive. That's so, it, so, so as the music industry, these people, these big industries that try to make things under their power, they're going to lose. It's just going to, like you said, it's going to be more, they're going to be shooting themselves in the foot more yeah. and more where it's not going to be worth it and they'll either die off or they'll have to join into the mainstream. Well, as right. of right now, Bitcoin is getting a lot of bad press and just like Napster got a lot of bad press when it was uh, starting up. And I think that anything that's a potential disrupting force, those entrenched um, centralized things like the press are going to look at it and go, wow, this is something that is actually threatening to us. So they're going to try to debase it by calling it names and saying it's unstable, it's this, that, and the other. When it's actually, you know, it's kind of like a, a dinosaur talking down the tar it's, you know, slowly sinking into, saying yeah. this tar is uh, not reliable and it's not, you know, going to go anywhere when it's, you know, really kind of the last thrashings of these industries that are, you know, breathing their last breath, so to speak. Yeah. Well, it's like I, I know, like there's a big debate over, like academic publications and stuff, where you oh, got right, <laughs> you got people uh, doing their doing debate. their publish publishing in these uh, big databases and stuff, and you know libraries have to pay like thousands and thousands of dollars to get access to to this, where you know this these these publications should be free to right. to yeah. students to to people. Yeah. Um, there was like I know that the anniversary of uh, what's his name Swartz that uh, Aaron Swartz just that killed himself yeah, last yeah, year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He downloaded all those uh, documents from JSTOR right. at MIT right. and, and 
was going was facing federal charges and and, and killed he's, himself. he he had the credo of most hackers, which is that information wants to be free, and yeah. I don't think that's just a credo to hackers. I think it's actually a truth. And in fact, the guy in uh, the Serenity movie, you know, he's like the information, it, you know, like it finds its way out. And I think you that's can't the way stop it is. the signal like, now. WikiLeaks <laughs> and, and things like that, um, whistleblowers, um, everybody's, everybody, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Every, not Dr. Manhattan, but Mr. Universe. <laughs> and so everybody gets, um, I think like this stuff does eventually find its way out. And that's just the natural way of digital allows perfect copies of things. And those copies basically strive to propagate. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? And these corporations, these, these they try. publications, well, yeah, think these about have a stranglehold on our on well, the academic it's information. Like the, the net neutrality that, uh, <clears throat> that they're trying to get rid of now oh. from the cable companies, where they're trying to actually cause a structure, just like with cable, where you have to pay more to have... Right. HBO and Showtime, they're trying to do that with the internet now, where they're with speeds on the internet. That is part of decentralization, too, is unbundling of things. Right. Glad you brought that up, yeah. A la carte. Right. Like, you can get your HBO Go um, by itself without having to get a whole cable package. So, Daryl, I'm just wondering, what could possibly go wrong? I don't know, dude. Could there be attacks or we could, collapse we could or keep bugs talking? and glitches? Oh, my! <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is that... Um, with any new technology, um, Bitcoin probably hasn't been tested in the worst of situations yet. So, um, first of all... Not even on the Silk Road? I'm (laughs) waiting for to see on the news like some bad drug deal went down over Bitcoin. Right. That's what I thought was going to break loose. (laughs) Well, the thing is, like, um, you know, a lot of people can talk down Bitcoin for being, um, like... You know, it's used on the black market and stuff like that. But, you know, any day of the week, more cash is used for mm-hmm. black market deals. <laughs> they use market. diamonds to do that, Exactly. Too. So the thing is, any currency is going to have that element. Right. But Crack. I don't think it's the focus. And the fact is, when Silk Road was closed down, uh, oh, Bitcoin did cards. drop, but it was something like an 8% drop. And I heard some people comment that, you know, if all of the drug trades and you know legal narcotics deals that were done in US dollars were closed down then you would see the dollar collapse yeah. you know <laughs> so I the thing is like, that. it was only an 8% <laughs> hit so that means it wasn't a super huge part of the market and it sprung back pretty fast well so. i was going to say didn't didn't the silk road is starting to actually they're getting around it but again but even before it was like revitalized uh, the price of bitcoin was already rebounding right. before that happened so um, it was kind of like a speed bump in Bitcoin's growth. Um, so we were, well, I, I'm sorry, the focus we were talking about, about here the, what was, was uh, go wrong? Like, what about what like hackability? Right. right. Yeah, that's the thing. It, it could be vulnerable like to attacks Russian because kid. if, uh, <laughs> how I said, the um, there's this distributed network that runs the security for it, and there's a thing that's possible called a 51% attack. That's when you control more than half of the hashing power that's used to mine Bitcoin, you could use that to inject um, things that break the rules. But because you own more than 50% of the network, those become the new set of rules now. So you can kind of wrest uh, power away from everyone else. And I think like one of the things that could be a vulnerability in the future is if uh, quantum computing can be used to hash these algorithms. And in particular, if it's developed in secret by, oh, say, yeah. a government or someone who wants to disrupt Bitcoin and all the things that spawn from it. Yeah, because if you could, actually created an ASIC with a quantum computer, yeah. wow, that actually would yeah, be so very like if, powerful. If, if um, someone who has uh, ill will in mind comes up with that technology first, they might be able to quite handily use just like a workstation or two to get a 51% advantage over everyone else, and then all of a sudden they you know, can do whatever they want with the network. But wouldn't, think, wouldn't, wouldn't that cause the, everybody else to like bail on that system? Yeah, and that's the thing too, is that like, um, I've also heard some people say that, you know, this cat's out of the bag, you know, like this, yeah. this is a new technology. Bitcoin is the first iteration of it. If Bitcoin fails, there are going to be a thousand yeah. others that spring up. It's just like place. MySpace isn't the biggest going on, but you know, yeah. it wasn't even the first one, but it was the first successful right. uh, social network. You I think it's the realization that this new tech exists and people are going to run with it because yeah. it's powerful. 
you know. And if, if there's a failure in Bitcoin, someone will reinvent it without the same vulnerabilities mm -hmm. and move forward. So right. I'm not too worried about that. It's just that if you're holding a lot of Bitcoin, you can't say for sure that those will be valuable in the right. future because it, it could collapse at some point. I think, too, with decentralization, what could go wrong is... is we'll never, never know. Ever know. Do you want to extend? I'll use mine. Nah. Okay. You'll never know. <laughs> we'll okay. It's only a, a secret, <laughs> secret uh, podcast. Secret sauce right You'll there. By know. the way, I've been quiet because I've been taking pictures uh, with everybody with uh, oh. the action figures, so we'll put those in the pictures? show notes. Okay. <laughs> so so who's going to be the winners and losers and... All right. I like this. Is the future session. going to be bright? Probably. Who benefits and who hurts from these? Yes. Yeah, so Everybody who is? hurts. Well, there's some people are going to make main buck. Yeah. <laughs> so, and some people are going to get fucked. <laughs> <laughs> hey! And the time wow. comes. Oh, 57. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Woo, not too game. bad. We're almost oh, I done before said, you said Some fuck. people are going to be g sweet. And then some people are going to beep, and you beep because it beeps. Okay. I right. said that didn't work. Anyway, oh. so yeah. So what do you think, Carol? Who's going to be, get, people like you, right, are going to be making all the money? Not necessarily. I think that, um, you know, like I'm already part of the Western culture. I'm already fairly, what are you taking a video of? You're going to say I'm going to have to wait and find out. Okay. <laughs> My watch. Look at my watch that Joey gave to me. I've got the camera reversed. All right. <laughs> <laughs> He's filming <laughs> himself. It's not all about you, Daryl. <laughs> and everyone listening has no idea what the hell's going on. Okay. Uh, um, but isn't who gets on it first the one that yeah, comes really, out ahead? Well, yeah, you're thinking of it that this is like a pyramid scheme. And I guess in some yeah. ways the beginning of these uh, uh, coins – digital currency could be conceived as a so I feel like the masses are kind of passed out right now and the people that are that are awake getting early on are hopping on the back of them <laughs> and all they need is duct tape baby <laughs> but if, oh, I'll relate it back to um, the early internet again it's like you know early adopters had an advantage because they could build on the technology first and by the time everyone turned their head and realized wow this internet thing is really something love is internet Cheese. No, not love. Oh, all right. Wow. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's what it sounded like you said, and I was Love I was still is the internet. Oh, love why is... did we fly off the rails? It was going so well. It's going so well. No, no, this is how well it's going. We okay. can go off the rails um, and we can get back on with uh, the duct tape. I know there was going to be something <laughs> useful to say about this. Um, oh, the future hurts. Okay. I think the people that's going to help the most are going to be uh, the poor and, you know, basically there's... They don't have computers. We've got like, <laughs> what, two, two billion people oh, in the industrialized world and there's another six billion that basically, like, the internet is new to them or they hardly have access. Yeah, a lot and of EBT has to take Bitcoin for it to really work. Yeah, right. but <laughs> a lot of people are starting to use the internet through their phones and right. phones are widespread exactly, all over the yeah. world. So I think it's going to be a real boon for the other six billion. I think we're going to give a voice to a lot of people that thus far haven't been represented. You know, right? So it's going to be an interesting change in the world when all of a sudden the actual population of the world that has access to technology <laughs> and, and wealth is suddenly fourfold what it once was. Well, when we right. were reading Demon, the, the 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 young guys were the ones making money off the uh, the, uh, the older people because they didn't know how to like fix their password on their you right. know Linksys right. and stuff like that. And it's that idea of the people who don't know what's going on are the ones who are going to lose out. Well, it's we true. already said that uh, we we said a long time ago that that you were going to quickly if you didn't know how to use. Uh, the internet, you're going to become functionally illiterate in society. Mm -hmm. Linda and I always talked about that. And now it's going to get even more so where with these situations, if you're not uh, part of it or at least understanding what it is, mm -hmm. you're going to be functionally illiterate. Extend. That's why you have to have libraries because if people don't have computers, that's what they're there for. I just extend. That's a section. good point. And librarians are there to teach you how to use the li libraries. Libraries are not just computers. books. No, it's, it's there to help. One of the things that public libraries do, uh, a, a big program they have is helping people find jobs. They go in there, they need some computers, they don't know how to use it. Librarians right. are there to help you teach right. education. Things. Education uh, yeah. on yeah. how to use a computer to find a job. 
And the um, and watch porn. We didn't talk about the losers so much. on watch porn. Right? <laughs> um, the losers are going to be the people that are in power right now, and especially those who are in power and don't give this the uh, weight it deserves. I think a lot of them are going to be lost in the dust when they realize the rugs pulled out from under them. The world's changing around them, and they're not changing with it. And those yeah. um, people who are agile enough to roll with the changes and keep up with things, I think are going to be okay. Um, but again, the big uh, thrust here is just, I, I think that uh, people that have the worst currencies, like Argentina, where there's an inflation rate of 40% per year, uh, Bitcoin is a way to transfer your wealth into something that's going to remain valuable, uh, probably, over the long term. Whereas if they keep their money in, in their local currency, they're going to wind up well, without, how, what's going to be the exchange rate for rocks, like in some of those countries? Exchange rate for rocks? Well, they use rocks as ex- <laughs> currency. <laughs> Coconuts. I mean, you can do that. Coconuts! So, um, but I think, like, yeah, the people with the worst um, current sta- like status right now and the worst, um, like, the ones that send the benefit the most. So this thing about, like, uh, people who emigrate to another country for work and they send money back home, uh, some of these... Um, companies for wiring the money are charging like 40 percent rates so you know you send a yeah. hundred dollars back to kenya and only 60 of it is getting through so if you eliminate oh. if you eliminate these wire companies i was wondering that because when i sent that money to the nigerian prince <laughs> I 500 I, it, it, he didn't get it all <laughs> Bartender, I was wondering if you knew any Nigerian princes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we got some old reference. Uh, Never mind. All right. So uh, we're gonna well, talk about what we think. Uh, yeah, two minutes well, apiece. I, this is what I think, and also kind of goes with it is that I think that the definition of what it means to be poor is going to change because of this. Uh. So that you actually you might have. All the food you need, you might live in a nice place, you might have access to all this technology, but you're going to be considered poor because you don't have whatever that next level is. That's a good point because if you... well, Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, well, if you think about uh, the way being poor has changed over time, I mean, people who are poor today, at least, we, I guess we can talk not so much in third world countries, but in, in our society... They're not poor compared to the people who were poor hundreds of years ago. Yeah. I mean, even the people who are starving or, aren't really starving. 50 years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. even 50. So, yeah. But go ahead and continue, Kel. No, no, that's what I was saying. So Okay. Um, I, I want to say that uh, I like the idea of, uh, de- of central decentralization. I think it's going to give a lot of power to the individual to do more and for everybody to have more. But uh, technology really has to figure it out. And in some ways, I hate being at this stage in technology. It's exciting because there's new stuff happening all the time and through our lives. But really, in 50 years, we're going to look back and be like, how did we make it through all that where we didn't know what was going on? Where How did we have a bank where people <laughs> controlled our money? And you know. Well, we always, we always think like that. Like I remember as a child that we had our first TV was a black and white TV, and it was crap. It had lines all the time. You, you, the picture quality sucks so bad. And now, looking at the high definition, when I'm watching, when all of a sudden it pixelates for a second, I am so mad <laughs> <laughs> because it! it shouldn't do that. Like watching old VHS tapes, you're like, Ugh. what's a VHS tape? Yeah. Very hard semen. <laughs> oh, it's been around for a while. So, well, Paul, what do you yeah. think about uh, semen? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> decentralization. Um, I think I, I think we've gone over it. it's good and bad. Uh, one issue that that I'm concerned about is with everything, if it gets decentralized, if we don't have these corporations running things. When something goes wrong, who's responsible? Mm-hmm. So if we have everyone, there's all these internet companies. It's all decentralized. We all have all these different things. The line goes down. Mm-hmm. Well, right now we have we're like here we're in AT and T. I don't know about Arcadia, but where I'm at AT and T area. That goes down. at and responsible to fix that. It's their responsibility okay. as me as a customer. Now, if it's all decentralized and you have all these little tiny businesses running everything, if they just say, well, forget it, we're just going out, I'm not going to do it, you're screwed. Hmm. You're going to have to change to another company. Yeah, You've got to fix things yourself. What if we all like start to rely on Bitcoin and then there's some unforeseen thing that right. happens down the right. line with one of the rules that nobody thought of? 
who's going <clears> to <throat> fix it? And I guess maybe a society, that's when we that. have to fix it on our own. They're, like It'll be part of the evolution where something will pop up, a group will pop up to fix well, it. Well, it's not like there won't be stewards for these technologies because you know there is a Bitcoin foundation and they have developers and everything and they work well, on the code base. Yeah, just look so. at the, the, the free programs now. Mm -hmm. Look at uh, Apache and all those other things. Um, look at uh, Wikipedia. All these free things and and when something goes wrong yep. it gets fixed doesn't it right right yeah so i i think that that may be a little bit of a worry but i think, I think that you, I think someone's going to step Darryl's up Daryl's word stewards i think is yeah. probably they're going to step up accurate. people are going to step up because they want to be they want to feel important they want to feel like they're part of something <laughs> right and so they'll and that's why wikipedia works is because people are like oh i get to mix you know and yeah, that's what happens yeah. and people do it, wikipedia is not the old west you know wild west everyone editing everything like it used to be no. right, it doesn't right. it doesn't there's actually people and they it's, and it's important I guess that, to them. That, that speaks yeah. to what I was going to mention is yeah, that I think the stuff polices itself to a degree, and it's actually a big That's libertarian what it's ideal. Is that you know the idea is like Bitcoin is the first truly free market that the world has ever seen. So what we're getting now is a bunch of innovation that wasn't isn't possible when you have an authority running a currency. So, but but you have to be if we're talking about like I'm thinking of the poor. Yeah. You need to have money in order to get into the game, right? To get into Bitcoin, yeah, like you really right. need a lot of money to get into if you're going to go mining, aren't those? Right, right that's right, just right. the start of it. That's true, though. Yeah, to mine it is uh, very competitive. But the thing is, anyone can take some of their currency and buy Bitcoin, and at least it's, it's a yeah, I value. did it. It wasn't that hard. And the value uh, so far has been increasing dramatically over time. <laughs> It, it, it's volatile. It goes up and yeah. down, but it's been uh, crashing upward, so to speak. You know, um, Year on year, it tends to be worth about 10 times what it once was. And I can't think of another currency that comes close to that kind of performance, let alone an investment in a stock or... Pokemon cards. Anything. Pokemon cards, maybe. Well, what I'd like to see is actually a, a, like a, a situation where people have like a, um, invested into these systems and it gets to the point where that is what makes you your money. Mm -hmm. this, the the corp, These uh, DACs are making yeah. you your money and you do what you want. And I think that what people will do is create, they're going to be creative. And I yeah. think it's going to uh, free up people to do amazing things. And the people who want to be uh, what would be considered poor you know, and just make it by with whatever the poor get to have, that's fine. But the yeah. people who want to create things and contribute, they will get more. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that's really cool about the model is that it's participatory. Like, you get rewarded for participating in it. Even something like Wikipedia that does a good job of policing itself and making itself run, you only get good feelings as a reward for you know, doing something good on Wikipedia. I felt good or when you I feel, contributed. Or you feel like that you, you're educating someone, which is its own reward, of course. Right. Everybody wants to be part of something important, and that's... But, but when you're doing, when you're mining Bitcoin or you're going to be working on these DACs in the future, um, you're literally going to be rewarded in uh, tokens that either you can exchange for other kinds of currency or use them for the services. And right now we have a lot of models where we have people pick through our personal data and figure out ways to advertise to us so that we can have free services, right? Because right. we don't mm -hmm. pay for much of the things we use on Google or Facebook or whatever, but we're advertised to and we're um, dictated the rules by these companies. What I, This is my wish list. It's not the most creative thing. I think we're going to see things that no one's imagining right now being built yeah. on this. But one of the low-hanging fruits I can imagine is just like, okay, I use a lot of Google services, right? I like Gmail. I like YouTube. I like uh, Skype, which is a Microsoft property and all these things. Hangouts, okay? Mm -hmm. I can like picture all those Hangouts. services becoming DAX in the future. And oh, the thing oh, yeah, is, okay. you know, right now if you want to make international calls with Skype, you pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. But what could happen in the future is that you can either pay by buying uh, credits on whatever the DAC version of Skype is, or you can mine it, and because you're contributing to the safety of the network, you mm -hmm. get to use it some. So you get, like, credits. It's a yeah, give and take. Credit. Yeah. yeah. All right, well, final thoughts. Final thoughts, sounding off. 
This you. was much better than the episode Are that never happened. The this is true. <laughs> the happens, episode that did not happen. Yeah, in the other uh, realm. Of, <laughs> yes, this was definitely more us. That alternate universe. So, uh, Daryl, do you want to? Uh, why, well, why don't we give you final thoughts at the final end of the end of the final? Uh, so, I'm like, so, well, I think you know, yeah, decentralization what, is likely. What stands in the way of this happening? It's I would say probably governments and corporations are the ones who are going to try to yeah. stand in the way. Oh yeah, they yeah. don't want to. And but the, just well, who like, wants to give up their power? Right, right, right so. exactly. But the thing is, is how <laughs> how much power they have to control us is dictated by how much we allow yeah. as a society so um i think that ultimately they're going to lose their power but I think we're going to the, see them fighting back and it, it yeah. may work for a while but that's one of the virtues of this technology in general is just that the cat's out of the bag yeah you know whether or not bitcoin survives as it is right now people know how this stuff works and then if it fails they can work on the points of failure and make it better and better right so after iteration after iteration someone's going to get this right at some point yeah and it might even become where we have government decentralized or there's a decentralized governing entity working on the internet that's giving stiff competition to all of the national governments. You're giving so them a that, stiffy. Makes so a the thing is, like, I mean, governments references. don't have competition, right? It's either you live by our rules or you move to a different country and live by their rules. Yeah. Right? Now, what if there's a competing government running on the Internet where people are voting and making uh, laws and regulations and all of a sudden the government has to pay attention to that because people are paying attention <coughs> well, to this alternate. Exactly. Just like with, with, with what's happening in the Congo with all the rapes that are happening before, they could kind of hide that stuff. But now it's on it's on yeah. the internet and yeah. it's everybody's concerned and there's actually uh, non-profits that have their websites and they say, this is happening. They spread the word yeah. and then everybody gets up... And, it, and, the thing and things is every, change in the country. Every government across the board has done things that if they came to the light of day, they would be absolutely, like their people would be appalled of it. Yeah. And that's the thing that transparency brings to light too. You know, if, if the competitive government and corporations online are all transparent, that means that the people are going to stop trusting the entities that aren't. Yeah. Because they've seen an example of how it works when it is transparent. Well, maybe this happening to the United States at this particular time is actually very advantageous because you can see America becoming more corrupted. America. <laughs> you know? America. It's becoming more and Food more solo. corrupted. Well, I think, too, a big hurdle is going to be getting um, acceptance from the masses. Yeah. The, the, big, the big change. I mean, yeah, look, and look it's going to be took rough. People who are very, very paranoid to use the internet to purchase things. However, I'm not putting my credit card on there. I'm not putting this the on one there. One thing I'll say about that, though, is that this space is moving really fast. Yeah, like, and I, everyone's commenting about how fast it's moving compared to what they expected. I think singularity-wise, it's yeah. it's going, it's it's doing the exponential thing, and it's going to move faster than we expect and because people who are it are more every day. The old people who don't like this stuff are dying off, and the young people... Can we do a bonus yeah. extend? Okay, because this is going to ding. But um, I'm glad you mentioned seeing you how, how long till it dings? Like, three, two... Oh! <laughs> okay. Get your duct tape. Uh, I just woke up. Ah! 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 Get off! No, not that kind of get off. Eight seconds, baby. Right? Eight seconds. <laughs> okay, that was our bonus. All right. No, no, no. I just have one thing because Brazilian bull ride. I was gonna say, you know, like, this may not be the technological singularity. But I think this is going to be a cultural and social uh, singularity because definition of singularity, you don't know what's coming on right. the side. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this yeah. is the thing that's going to change society. I think we don't know where it's going or what's coming behind yeah. you. If it's okay, that was the extent. Okay. All right, well... <laughs> Then that went conclusion. That went that quite was well. Smooth. That was yeah, nice. That was, that that was, was nice. Yeah, Can that you was imagine, like, if we were trying to be more complicated with this? There's some yeah, alternate that, reality where yeah. there's some alternate. Just episode. imagine if Daryl blabbed on yeah. incessantly, like a, and everybody like a just lecture. listened. Yeah, okay. and we're like, whoa, <laughs> and Terrible. then I'm like, whoa, <laughs> and then he's like, whoa, <laughs> whoa, whoa. 
So yeah, uh, things went very well, I think. Congratulations, everybody. Nice. Uh, okay, so so next we have been decentralized. Back. Let's Cut centralize ourselves back to uh, Mr. Kale. Yourself. It is your choice. What are we doing for next week? Next week we're going to talk about monumental projects, and what I mean by that is these uh, pro these projects that mankind has done where it's just amazing that these things have been accomplished. Uh, we're gonna start out with what happened in the past. I'm a monumental and then talk. project. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're still there. working on you. <laughs> <laughs> and what's it's happening like now, what's the kind of uh, projects we're working on now, and then what we're gonna do in the future. So you're talking like Mount Rushmore. Right, uh, that would be a thing in the past. The past right? And also the Crazy Horse Monument, right. which I is present. And then, you but know, all, is like it the space down? elevator is it, is or it the be, Starship Enterprise. Is, is, it gonna be, is, is it all physical or is it also <laughs> like, can there be... Well, one of the things too is a massive online world okay, yeah. for the future. So okay. any any of that. I like it, Kale. Let's How do it. massive decentralized corporations? We, we went there. Yeah, <laughs> we went there. And but, it was pretty good, we'll so see. let's not push our luck. <laughs> Really, let's not push yeah. it. Yeah. All right, that sounds pretty good for next week. Awesome. Uh, so, any last words before we go today? I thought Crazy Tip. Horse was a strip bar. Just saying. What? There is one in Vegas. Yeah, there's a, oh, okay. there's, there's okay. a, a dance club in West Virginia. <laughs> yeah. It is a monument oh, okay. to uh, breasts. massiveness. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. Remember, you can... Oh, we forgot to do the email. The top oh, my God. Uh -oh. You can always uh, email us, show at imramblingcom Please you know do, because nobody does. Maybe this week, because we didn't say it, no one will write. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Weird. Right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining us. Next week's going to be exciting and new. Come aboard. <laughs> so we're we'll infecting you. We're Oh. oh, the love one. Oh, felching. Oh, <laughs> my cheeks are felched up. All right, we'll see you where we're at. We're at IamRambling.com. This is who we didn't say goodbye. Yeah. This is Joey Shamel. This is Paul Hottinger. Kelly Anderson. And Daryl George. And we'll see you next week. At the Lido Deck. <laughs> Massachusetts. Hey. Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from incoherent ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish.